Welcome to The Real Estate Show. From buying to selling and everything in between. Rochester's home for everything real estate. And now, your hosts from the Anthony Butera team of Keller Williams Realty, Greater Rochester. It's Anthony Butera and Jason Mancuso. Hey everybody, welcome to The Real Estate Show. Anthony and Jason here. Um, this, I think this is the first real estate show podcast um that uh with without the the mask mandate for vaccinated people we this is uh, yeah have you ripped that mask off have you gone into wegman's free free and chinning it and so, it's summertime i ripped my shirt off now because the weather's warm and going to wegman's well that's a that's a walmart thing you know <laughs> right yeah <laughs> you know what it took for them to to relieve us of that mandate as soon as i got braces they said, masks, <laughs> masks are coming off. That's perfect. How much longer mm-hmm. you got on the braces? Uh, shit. So I, I, I originally I was told they're going to come off like five weeks before the surgery. And um, then I was told that they're staying on right till the surgery. And the day before the surgery, they're taking the braces off and putting hooks so after the surgery they can attach the wire to wire me shut for five weeks after oh my god yeah did you so, give a preview of what the podcast is going to be like for the five weeks when you're required shut welcome to the real estate show <laughs> i am jason mancuso and my partner anthony butera <laughs> jesus uh, christ so like, sorry, i don't have buddy. enough Literally things going against me that. <laughs> yeah, and 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 Jason still is convinced that I'm going to be going on listing appointments with my jaw wired shut for some reason. This is the highlight of my wife, uh, my <laughs> life. There's, you know, I'm the highlight of Anthony, your wife. Anthony, you said it. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony's jaw wired shut. My kids being born, getting married in that order, <laughs> <laughs> and Rick dropping off HVAC equipment. At marks and never coming back. He's, I can I can hook it all up. <laughs> oh, Lily will be done by yeah. four. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so have you heard this this new term? You know, we've got the the Gen Zers, right? Which is the mm-hmm. youngest. We got millennials, and then there's Gen X, which is like people you know forty to fifty, I think, around there. Um, and now there's a new one. Did you hear the new one? Geriatric millennials. What age group's that? That, uh, is, that is, I us? think I just, I just miss it. I think it's like, eight, like 1984 to 1986. Or, you yeah, know, like, I'm geriatric. It's baby. like late 30s, mid, you it's, know, mid to late 30s geriatric. It's millennials. actually so perfect for me. Geriatric. You're 84, Jason? Yeah, 84. 84. Best of both worlds, geriatric and a millennial. Yeah. So, because there was kind of like a, you know, where do they land? Do they land with Gen X? Do they land with, uh, uh, Millennials, you know, where, where do they yeah. go? They say geriatric millennials. Jason is like he's way he's way more he's closer to being geriatric than he is <laughs> millennial. Yeah, no, I am geriatric. Get off my lawn. Yeah, <laughs> irritable. Get together. Bald. You know. <laughs> well, we got this um this new study though about millennials that yeah, sixty four percent of millennials say that they have regrets about buying their current home hmm. um they and they kind of i think they break down why they have they have uh, maintenance and uh, uh and other costs are too high bought too small of a house bad location didn't get the best mortgage rate bought too big of a house mortgage payment too high overpaid and not a good investment <laughs> those were the big those were the big ones so um yeah. What percentage regrets being with their significant other? Yeah, they don't have of that, that on same here. group. Yeah, they don't have that on there, right? Sixty-four. Yeah, the the other the other thirty-six percent were killed. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't, I don't, I haven't caught a ton of like regret um, calls. Uh, I, I feel like. Well, talk, I mean, any really, right? I mean, I think not to interrupt, but like this just speaks to how we run our business as agents. And I think the the problem, you know, potential problem, 
in the market that we're experiencing now is like if people aren't being advised properly and just like you know getting caught up in the auction mentality and wanting to win yeah and then things go wrong like yeah you're gonna have regret for sure yeah yeah it, it, i think that I, you'll start to see the remorse once the market shifts right right as soon as that market shifts and values start to either just stabilize or potentially decline in certain areas i think then the uh the remorse will kick in and then we'll start seeing some more people that potentially backwards on their house for a short period of time. But, you know, there's, there's so many reasons that people forget about, like, you know, the, the tax write-offs, right? Like if you quantify the tax write-offs and divided it by 12 and, and how it affects your, your monthly nut for your, for your housing bills, and you start paying attention to the principal you're paying into with the low interest rates. It's like, you got to subtract all that when people are comparing that to, to renting, but nobody ever wants to go through that exercise. Um, they just, they just want to live in regret 64% of the time. Well, uh, also it seems like at least one of these is, um, can be helped a little bit. Like if your mortgage payment is too high, is it, I mean, you can like refinance if maybe you got a bad rate or something or a higher rate? So a lot of times what you will see, not the lender that we typically refer people to, but a, a lot of times what you'll see is they'll underestimate the taxes and year two, the escrow analysis happens. And if they underestimated and you got reassessed, there's some anger there. I mean, I've gotten those calls in the past where it's like, hey, mortgage payment went up $200. What do we do? Well, you pay it or you foreclose, right? I mean, it's, <laughs> it, it stinks. And yet, like, we're going to probably see that. And I say that because it is not uncommon today for a house to be assessed for $120,000, sell for $225,000. Like, that's not a crazy scenario. It's that that's happening, right? So going into it, you have to understand that your monthly payment will in time go up. And hopefully by the time it does, your uh, star tax rebate will hope maybe break you even on that. So maybe you don't feel it. Yeah. But but, yeah, then you're just not getting the, the rebate. It's yeah, but I mean, think, of, th but think about this generation, though. Think about this generation and like, you know, it's they, they don't want to commit to anything, right? They, um, they, they, they want it. It's, in, they, they, it's instant gratification. They got it and then they have to bask in it and then they regret it, right? And I think it's just, uh, you know, they always, they, they want something better or... I mean, a lot of times too. I mean, how many relations? Well, I'm, I'm the geriatric. I've committed to the same pair of underwear for the last 20 years. Yeah, which is none. We had to clean. We had to clean those. <laughs> <laughs> but with the like, you know, with the split up rate and the divorce rate, how many people get into homes ba um, basing it on a a double income and maybe things are rocky and getting a house together will fix it until it doesn't. 99.9% .9 of the time, and then you're going to live in regret, right? Um, but I, I, for us, I haven't experienced it yet. And we had buyers that felt like they overpaid for a house last year. And now they're looking at the market and they're realizing they got a pretty darn good deal. Right. So I don't it think all, it's affected yeah. us that bad. To me, I think regret comes with, you know, things that are not planned at least if you're getting into the, to the decision, the initial decision to buy a home with a clear cut plan and expectation set in terms of how things are going to operate, um, doing that and then moving forward. Meaning like, you know, if you're advised properly or if you're making decisions that are, you know, educated, so to speak, um, <clears throat> you shouldn't have regret as, as long as everything's going as planned. You know, meaning like, if you're buying a home and you plan on being there 10 years and life happens and, you know, there's, there's something that leads you to needing to sell a year or two down the road, it's, you're probably going to have regret around buying that home, especially in this market. And that's even, 
you know, five years ago too, just with, just with the logic that, you know, you're paying all interest up front on your mortgage and not principal. Um, so you don't, you know, you just in theory, unless you put a large down payment down, you know, if you're a minimum down payment buyer, you're not going to have equity and, you know, it could sting financially. Yeah. So, and if you're still, if you're still upset, you're going to want to sell or be sold. Right. This show is brought yeah. to you by Grant Cardone. <laughs> um, so, I mean, to like dissect this list of what they're going through, like all of this, and, and again, like I'll, I'll spend this to uh, reasons why you should have, have a, a reputable agent that's going to represent your best eight, your best interests so that these are all topics of discussion and you don't have surprises after you close and purchase a home. Um, so maintenance and other costs are too high. Like this, this is a topic of discussion that we have. Like you now own a home. You don't have a landlord. You can't call them to, you know, change the light bulb or replace the water heater, whatever it is. Right. So you have to plan on that in your financial budget. And as we've discussed before, like for us, the first you know, stage of buying a home is the financial side of things to see what you're comfortable with and what the overall life budget is and how owning a home and purchasing a home falls into that. It's a and, good point. And part, part of that is like, okay, like you, you're going to have to do stuff to the home after the, after you buy it, right? Forever. So what we do as agents is like, really like, look at, this is what you're going to have to do your furnace is 30 years old. It could last you another five years, 10 years, whatever. It could, you know, poop out on you tomorrow. You have mm -hmm. to budget for that replacement so that you have heat. So you can't have regret off with that said, once the furnace shits to bed a year later. Like it's, you know, for, right? it's, it's interesting because as you were talking about that, I'm just like, I'm going back in time and thinking about working with buyers and, there's like, there, there's two different demographics and one of them is, and Jason, you've worked with buyers like this. They're, they're the buyers that like will take anything. They're just so excited about getting a house that they just, they don't care. They don't care what's wrong with it. And that's where a good agent comes in that kind of has to give you a heads up, right? And saying, yeah. guys, like, I'm glad you like this. And yeah. here's what you're going to have to look out for. Or then you get the analyzers that will talk themselves out of every good opportunity. And then when you relay why this property makes sense to them, all of a sudden it's like, whoa, I thought we were on the same team. We are. And if I don't tell you that this is a good deal, you're never going to buy a house because there's always going to be a million reasons not to. Right. Look at that. Of the great sayings all over. Look at the bookmark in this book. There. Quotes there. for days here. Did you so did we go through how at least this article that went through this, how they say to get ahead of it? Yeah. How to get ahead of regret. Yeah. Spit it out. This is what they say. There's there's three big tips for it. All right. And I know you, and I'm sure just you guys kind of covered it just now, but they say um, like if you're gonna look up look for a house, build up your savings more. So then you, you can go in with the amount of money that you need to get what you want. The other one is make sure you're thorough in what you're looking for and how to achieve it. Um, do proper inspections. And um, even if you have to spend a bit more upfront, it can mean avoid avoiding surprises later. And then the next one is do your homework, research the market and types of homes you're interested in and uh, just go from there. Yeah, I mean, you know, being thorough and doing your homework, like, is, is very important. Um, and that's, that's what you have us for to help you with. It, it's a matter of, does the decision that you're making to buy a home align with the overall goals that you have in life and, you know, the financial side of things? And if it doesn't, then why would you make the biggest financial transaction in your life? If there's any questions around like how the next, you know, short term future could play out. Right. Yeah. Like to me, that's just like what renting is for is like, you can't commit. So don't 
make a massive financial transaction that essentially requires commitment. Now, yeah. you know, you find a steal of a deal and it's like, you can't lose no matter what happens. Okay. You know, cool. But that's rarely available in any market. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it, it's just, it, it really comes down to like, does the plan align, you know, with the goals, right. That you have. And then, and then making sure like, you know, we come across as agents sometimes is like, you know, CYA covering, covering our ass. And it's, it's not necessarily about that for our benefit, but it's, it's to make sure that you clearly understand what you're getting into and you're prepared for it. Yeah. And, and in, inherently like, yeah, we, we don't want to have egg on our face by not telling you something, but it's not about the egg on the face. It's about like, are, are you sure this makes sense for you to do? I don't want you to have any regret. That's the, the last thing we want in, in representing any, um, you know, buyer or seller is to get a call, you know, a year or however long down the road to say like, oh, we messed up. I'm in trouble. Like yeah. That. You just muted yourself, Jason. Oh, there you go. All right, phone's blowing up. No, but what you were saying really is it happens on our end. We take it like, you know, it's it's you know, like it's it's us that's feeling the pain with you too. It is. And the buyers that again, back to the demographics of nitpicking and never like n- never liking anything, um, compared to the buyers that are a little more uh well, I'd say less adverse to risk, right? It's like we have to pivot how we treat those people and the ones that um, are riskier consumers, we have to guide you different. The ones that are going to overanalyze, um, sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of times they'll drive you nuts, right? And um, it, it's, it's a slippery slope because um, they get offended when you inform, right? If you inform them, they get offended because they have to analyze everything and it has to be at their pace and it has to feel right. And in this market, it's not going to go at your pace and you're probably not going to feel right about it. So you may not want to buy in this market. If you're going to analyze everything, there's a buyer's market that will happen again and homes are going to sit on the market for 90 to 120 days. That's probably the market for you because you can drive an agent crazy and show them 75 houses. And the first one you looked at will probably still be available. But right now, it's, it, it's, it's going to be tough on you. So you may want to save yourself the, uh, the stress. Well, and another spin on that is like for, for what we're talking about in terms of not having to regret, like I, I'd rather have the over analytical buyer. Yeah. Right, because at least you're able to, you know, align what you're trying to accomplish in advising them, uh, you know, with their just, you know, how they're, uh, you know, the cut of their jib, their human nature, right? In terms of like, you know, this is how I operate anyway. Great, like, cool. That's we're on the same page then, because we want to be over analytical to a degree too, to make sure that you're fully aware of what you're getting into. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's great i i just I, I don't i don't because it just can't happen the analytical buyers the equation has to make sense right they have to quantify everything and this isn't the market i mean i had a i had a um i'll say a passionate exchange last night with with sellers that just couldn't understand that the list price has no bearing on the sales price right and both are engineer minded, very analytical, and we couldn't see eye to eye because they, I had to show them the equation. And when I said, guys, listen, nobody knows what your house is going to sell for. Even the buyer that's going to win your home has no idea what it's going to sell for. When you have 15 people that are writing escalation clauses over escalation clauses and waiving inspections and offering to satisfy your wife just to get your house. I can't quantify that. There's no numbers that make sense. There's no equation, right? So the analyzers are going to analyze themselves into an apartment or their parents' basement. Sure. And I get that. And, and, I and this agree. is why I don't work with buyers anymore. <laughs> and I think, I think the goal is, okay, we're analytical, but we're also understanding of the market. And yeah. let's play ball. 
Yep. So there's there's always like a fit somewhere out there. That buyer that you that you're talking about may be you know a ten percent chance compared to a fifty percent chance in this market. Yeah, but you know there's still a chance type of thing, um, and it's it's just a matter of like that's fine. I'd rather I'd rather you be comfortable getting into something than feeling you know, rushed or, you know, this doesn't make sense, but I'm going to do it anyway. Like that's where yeah. you get in a, right. It's like, okay, screw it, throw it at him. Let's see what happens. And then you win. And then a year later, you're like, God damn it. You know, Dude, how about, how about, how about telling the analyzer that they can't have a home inspection if they want the house, right? Like, yeah. That doesn't and that's, well. And, and these are the conversations them. we're having, right? It's like, yeah. listen, it's not that you can't, you're, you're analytical. Let's look at statistics then, because you can appreciate that angle. Your your probability of winning this, you know, having this offer accepted is about a three percent chance with a home inspection. <laughs> Not us yeah. telling you you ha- you're required to waive it. We hate yep. telling people, right? Yeah, it's, it's if you really want this house, you're uh, you know you, you're three percent odds of winning in comparison to, you know, depending on other terms, you know, well above 50% odds of winning um, if it's a strong offer, offer otherwise. So just explaining it that way to like, okay, um, you know, this is, this is the way, you know, unfortunately in the market is, is, is how we have to do it. And, you know, again, the whole point of like not having regret after the fact is that this has been explained we're in agreement as, as representing you and you making the purchase that this is, this is how you do it. If you want to do it, if you want, don't want to do it, like, please don't. Yeah. Cause we don't want you to have regret. You know and what I was thinking about position to where it's like, I mean, yeah, I get it. Like having just zero uh, shred of regret when something goes wrong is a tough thing to swallow, but it's just a matter of like, okay, this sucks, but this is, I knew what I was getting into is the goal yeah. right versus but, versus regret at large scale of like i had no idea this was going to happen and and that's how we run our business is you know unfortunately a lot of times it seems like you know we're we're um you know just just explaining all the negatives yeah right or just explaining the worst case scenario but if i'm a consumer i would rather hear that than like oh yeah no everything will be fine don't worry about it yeah, and that and that's just it, right? So it's tough, and not everybody can get away with it. But I almost try to be the grim reaper on a, in our first conversation, and it's gonna stink yeah. hearing the, the the things that I'm gonna tell you. And yet, I'd rather the grim reaper show up day one, where you have the opportunity to bounce out of this market, as opposed to the closing table, because nothing was portrayed until then, and now it's too late, right? So what Absolutely. I was thinking about earlier today was the consequences of the market we're in right now too, right? So let's fast forward three years. By then, I'd think that the market would stabilize and maybe even shift over to a buyer's market. Um, How about how many home inspections are going to discover like earth shattering stuff and we're going to go back in time and we're going to say, guys, did you know anything about this? Well, no, we bought in 2021. We couldn't have home inspections. What do you mean you couldn't have home inspections, right? That's the payback time, and we're it's it's going to be fun. Um, that's when my job is going to become a nightmare um, a little bit more, you know, as as a listing agent. Yeah, right. I, right now, I could sell it, houses with a jaw wired shut. <laughs> you could do that in any market, big guy. <laughs> um, and and that's this is where we see it on our end. Like you know, we're we have a reputation of, of you know, uh, you know, it's why people come to us, right? And we deal with a lot of like, yeah, when I bought this house, my agent did this or didn't do this, and it's uh, you know, without you know, kind of rubbing it in, it's like, oh boy, that's yeah, we would never do that type of thing, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, or we would do this, you know, whatever the scenario is. So it's it's. I think it's all about the advice that you're getting, or if you're someone who's choosing not to get any advice, like you better be pretty friggin' detailed down to everything that you need to know about this and not to spin sure. this into a case for why you need an agent. But unless you're doing this every day, you know, like 
what do you know from reading this article or, or whatever, right? Or you bought a house 10 years ago. And, and, and that's, you know, that's the difference between, or could be the difference between regret or not. Yeah. Because if you're getting the advice and you're planning things out properly, then you're positioned to not have a lot of regret because at least you knew that that could go wrong. Mm -hmm. Agreed to do it. I think that's the point, right? Yep. Exactly. Well, you can uh, check out AnthonyButerraTeam.com and uh, subscribe to the real estate show there and our, our Facebook and YouTube. All right, guys. Enjoy this weather. Yeah. Thanks for listening to The Real Estate Show. Find us on Facebook, iTunes, Stitcher, and YouTube. If you're looking to sell or buy, talk to the Anthony Butera team of Keller Williams Realty, Greater Rochester. Visit anthonybuteraTeam.com.